when I, I read a book or learn different things that I can carry with me, you know, principles in life. Uh, I'll put them on my skin. I'll put them on my body that they'll always remind me to stay grounded and stay humble, uh, stay in the moment. When I got my first tattoo, I was about 20 years old, a couple years into the league already and playing in the NBA. My brother, my sister, a couple of my friends are like, man, when are you going to get your first tattoo? You know what I mean? You got money, you know, you made it. You might as well get some ink. So I'm like, you know what? I think it's about time. A lot of people had, had tats, you know, getting into the league. From LeBron, seeing KD, I thought KD was dope because, you know, under his jersey was all tatted up. AI, obviously. But really, it's just uh, my brother and my sister, you know, they really inspired me to do my tattoos. Uh, my first tattoo, it was the, the yin and yang on my back. Being black and white in America, the yin and the yang, it spoke to me instantly. You know, the fluidity, the circle of it, the symbiosis of black and white. At its essence, it's just balance. You know, and so that's kind of how I try to live my life. The yin and yang, I actually sketched myself. The skeleton hand is connected by string. It's dropping a crystal ball into a part of the yin and yang. The human hand is dropping a basketball into the yin and yang. And it's, it's cool, you know, the crystal ball to me, it just symbolizes the unknown. You know, it's kind of like life and death and not to be scared of, of death and life. To me, it's basketball, really. You know what I mean? It's really what it comes down to. And I'm connected to it. I got the ball on the string. I know at some point in time, I'm gonna have to let it go, but for right now. The hourglass, if you look closely, it has like a quasar, a supernova inside the hourglass in reverse is going out. Just to symbolize that we as humans, although we try, we can't encapsulate time. Yeah, when it comes down to it, the ape head with the top mixing, his brain is kind of blown out of his head. He has atoms and like electrons and protons swirling around his brain. And really it just comes down to evolution. We as humans have evolved. I think that mind is the power and mind is the future. On my ribs, I did uh, The Tree of Life. And it was after reading a book called uh, Transcendental Meditation. It's just really about the essence of life, living a fulfilled life and, and transcending uh, some of the petty circumstances and, and some of the petty things that we go through as humans and emotions that we have to sort out as humans and kind of just uh, being bigger than that. I mean, just it, you learn so much just from seeing trees. The deeper the roots, the taller the tree can grow. For so long, a uh, seedling, it, it, roots and roots and roots before it actually even emerges. And then everybody sees like, oh my gosh, like look at the sprout, it's finally emerged, but they don't understand how long that it's actually been enrooting itself. You know, you don't water the leaf, you know, you water the roots. And uh, as people, we don't necessarily have roots, but when some of the circumstances around you aren't going well, you really have to enrich uh, what's going on on the inside. And then the circumstances around you will change stuff. So. Uh, it was really a deep message for me and, um, you know, something that actually grounded me. Can you tell us a little bit about your podcast? Well, Aaron Gordon's Quest for Enlightenment. It's just learning different ways to cope with being Black in America and then just being a person in this world, you know. A part of living is suffering and there's a lot of different ways to cope, whether it be negative or positive. And I was just looking for different positive ways to cope with some of the struggles and some of the stresses in life. Well, my favorite artist right now is Roly. He's out of Orlando. He does a bunch of dudes. He do like Rick Ross. He was on Ink Master. He's dope, man. I think he's one of the best artists there is, you know, period. I definitely got a favorite. It's this one, uh, not the Tree of Life, but, but surrounding the Tree of Life is a Native American. It's a skeleton, a Native American chief. I think it's dope. He got the head wrap and then he got the bandana on too. And it just reminds me of the poor teaching, how much boy manifest destiny was, you know, what they tried to pass that over, what they tried to pull the wool over our eyes from. It just reminds me of uh, my ancestors uh, that, were, that were massacred. I, I have uh, a tattoo, she's a woman and a candle tucked in between the arm of the skeleton of the Native American. Once again, it just it brings me back to the essence of life and, and kind of uh, the essence of a woman and, and how much they give and how much they light our way. You know, I, I think there's nothing more beautiful than the essence of a woman. On the back of my calf, I got a rose growing. That's about essence of life as well. After I read, I think the inner workings of tennis, 
You know, it talked about growing a flower and growing a rose, or how frustrating it could be to shape a craft or hone your skills. When you're growing a rose garden, you don't scream at the roses and you're not frustrated with them. It doesn't help them grow. And that's the same uh, kind of principle I apply to uh, honing my craft in basketball. You know, not to be too frustrated, frustrated with myself, and not to berate myself too much, not to get down on myself and just allow it to grow naturally and beautifully. On the other calf, I got a, a Marine. My grandpa was a Marine and uh, fought in the Korean War, so that's a tribute to him. I got this one on my ankle too. This one's dope. It's one of my favorite ones. His shoes hanging over a telephone wire, but the telephone wire is a heartbeat. It just reminds me that, you know, basketball will end too, but my life will still go on. And it's just like, not about taking things too serious. All right, so my most recent tattoo is Black Power Fist, Black Equality, Black Lives Matter Fist. It's just holding a scale, you know, a scale of justice. It's growing roots down through the bottom. Kind of remind me to be an activist in this world and like how necessary it is to be an activist in America. Because the yin and yang, the Tao, you know, essentially is a very pacifist religion and a pacifist symbol. As I'm getting older, I understand uh, the, the necessity for more activists in America to create justice and, and to create balance and equality. I got the drippy piece on. I thought that one was just fun to have, and uh, that was dope. I got a couple of chess pieces on my thighs. I got the king, I got the pawn, and I got the knight. Um, real big fan of chess and all the principles that chess can teach you. I never make a move unless it's protected. Think two, three moves ahead. Uh, understand that there's a beginning, middle, and end game. The only thing that's off limits is probably just my face. That's probably it. Probably end up doing my hands. Yeah, because I already got the back of my neck and I got the king's crown over there. It sits on top of the all-seeing eye. That reminds me, you know, that there is no thing that governs higher than the all-seeing and the all-being and that the almighty self. So. Plan to fill everything. It'll probably just be my chest and my stomach open, but for the most part, I'm just get tatted everything except my face, maybe leave my neck out. I waited a long time to get tattooed anyways because, you know, I wanted to make sure I found the right artist, found the right artwork. So, you know, I have plenty of time to get tatted.